Hello everybody and welcome back to Paul's Wine Reviews, the hippie edition. If you are new to the channel, let me give you a little rundown on how it works around here. Every week I open a new bottle of wine and I give it a grade based off of three criteria. How it smells, how it looks, and of course, how the wine tastes. If you are returning to the channel, welcome back and let's get into today's wine. Today we have a wine by the winemaker David Akiyoshi. This is a 2020 California red blend and it gets its name Ink 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 because of the three quote inky grapes that the winemaker used in this particular red blend. And those grapes are Petit Syrah, Tanit, and Torloigo. Uh, the last one is Italian and I'm not really sure if I pronounced that <laughs> well, so you can let me know down in the comments below uh, exactly how it's pronounced. And I'll put the spelling on screen uh, as well. With that said, I don't know exactly where the grapes were grown. Uh, just couldn't find that information online, so it's just a California red blend as best I can tell. You can pick up this bottle at NakedWines.com for $14.99. It is time, once again, for the famous bottle open challenge. Last week, I was unsuccessful, and I missed the mark by one second. This week, I'm still aiming for that 15 second benchmark. However, if I am again unsuccessful, I will be forced to eat my dog. Think of the horror. With that said, the time starts as soon as I say so. Ready, set, and begin. Here we go. Got the foil off. That was easy. Take this out. Put it in. Easy peasy, quick as lightning. Here it goes, here it goes. This is the fast part. Twist, twist, twist. Go. And stop the time. Stop the time. That was, that was pretty quick if I do say so myself. Okay. We didn't quite make that 15 second cutoff, but True to my word, and with a heavy heart, I have prepared my dog for consumption. Good boy. We are now on to the smelling portion of the video, so let's go ahead and get ink, ink, ink into the glass, 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 and we'll see what we can suss out. Here's a little pour. Oh yeah, that is really, really bold. They are not kidding. So that is big, bold, full of flavors, full of just everything hits you all at once, which is great because it's got a lot of complexity and you can smell it. That's awesome. I will say the drawback to that is it's kind of hard to suss anything out. It's mostly fruit forward, but I'm losing some of the complexity there, unfortunately, with just how much odor is coming out of the glass. So I'm kind of on the fence about recommending this based off of smell alone. Sort of like a 6 out of 10, just based off of the smell. But then again, we will see what the future holds. Let's not judge a book by its cover just yet. On to the next portion of the video. With the smell out of the way, it's time to move on to the color of the wine. And looking at it, the name does not disappoint in the color portion. This thing is deep and dark, and it is red, and it is inky, and it does remind me of like a bottle of ink that you could dip a quill into. You could write your love letter to how deep this is with this wine. That is just how dark this is. There's no possible way any light can get through. It's actually pretty cool. And as far as the alcohol percentage, so this is 14.5% alcohol by volume, and the alcohol lines are pretty good in there. Nothing to complain about, a little big maybe. This definitely gets a pass from me, and it's definitely redeemed itself from the smelling portion. Really looking forward to seeing how this wine tastes. Here we are at my favorite portion of the video. Let's give this wine a sip and see what we can suss out here. Wow. All right, that is 
really good. I like this quite a lot. Definitely fruit forward at the very beginning. And then this aftertaste sort of, it's a little bit, I wanna say cinnamony or like warm spices, if that makes sense. It's pretty dang good and honestly a lot more drinkable than I was originally expecting. It doesn't smack down your taste buds like crazy like I initially thought it would. Really like it. I don't know if there's too much more to say. And that will do it for today's episode. To summarize, this deep, dark, and bold red is surprisingly more drinkable than it lets on. It is fruit forward with a little bit of cinnamon there in the middle in the aftertaste. I recommend you pair this with a thick cut of beef and maybe a quill pen to write down your experiences. Don't forget to like the video if you haven't already, and subscribe for more wine-related content. And until next time, cheers.